Hi, in this video I thought I would give a demonstration of this old Meddings pillar drill that I use sometimes. It's pretty heavy uh, and it's old and it's probably made in the way that you'll rarely find nowadays. Uh, it would be a very expensive drill. So it's got a slotted cast iron slotted table which is really good for if you want to clamp things down. I like to use these T-nuts there uh, so they can slot in there. And uh, what else? It's got uh, a solid column that is really, really amazingly substantially heavy. Uh, believe me, I've tried to shift the thing around before on my own. Uh, I've ended up using a hoist uh, into the rafters trying to lift the thing up. Or I do successfully lift it up, but it is heavy. The, the um, head as well. It's not a geared head, by the way. It's pulley, uh, entirely pulley driven, belt driven. But we'll have a look at that in a bit. But the head is... I think cast iron construction as is the base as well so uh, with all that mass there it makes for a very substantial vibration free machine so let's just quickly uh, isolate the power and let's have a look in there okay so uh, hopefully you get a clear view let me just have a quick look at my mobile phone screen yeah reasonably clear so it's got pulleys front and back there five step pulleys so uh, it's Gives you a reasonable range of speeds uh, at the moment we're in a faster speed so and, and i've got the the belt uh tension set so it, it's it's reasonably easy to do this i'm actually on the working on the wrong side at the moment it'd be much easier if i came around here but then i'd be in the way of the video but let me just see if i can do this from this angle and so it's uh yeah if if you want the belt a bit tighter it would be better um there's a chance on belt slip like this because there's a bit of slack but then again if things jam then it's much nicer really just to uh, let the belt slip a bit rather than have some something more catastrophic happening um, let's actually let's just quickly run the drill with the belt cover off there's no safety interlock on the on the top by the way uh, this is the original switch gear behind here but that's long since been disconnected I've got a uh, a no volt release start stop switch here so that's got a magnetic contact as so if say whilst you're using it whilst it's running power goes off that contact will drop out so then when the power is restored it won't start up again so start hopefully you can make out i'm not too sure how good the sound is in this video but hopefully you can make out that's a pretty quiet running machine Obviously, when you put the lid on top, that always adds like an element of a slight rattle somewhere. But I would say as drills go, as pellet drills go, that's, that's a pretty quiet machine. So it is actually um, the, the top cover is, although it's pressed still, it is actually quite uh quite a you know like quite strong um quite well made okay so let's get a drill bit in there what we do we're in a low speed at the moment so or the, lo the lower speed so we drill some still just to give you an idea of what it can do uh, we won't be testing it like to its ultimate capability or anything we're just just drill some normal everyday holes that's probably something like a six mil drill i would say so I'm going to use these T-nuts and just a bit of scrap, my old steel angle, probably about 4mm thick I would guess. Now you'll notice that I just swivel that out of the way, there is a lot on the back uh, but there's also, hopefully you can see this, let me just quickly check, yeah, I think you can, uh, that there is something where you, you should put your key, uh, which I always forget to do and then I can't find the key, but that is also a, a safety feature in that if you have that below the table and that's locked off with a spanner, so uh, hopefully then you're not going to be able to drop the table on your feet, because I did hopefully have mentioned earlier, I think I did, uh, that the table is extremely heavy um, not to the point you can't raise and lower it but it, it is pretty heavy there's you know some some machines have 
some sort of uh, uh, ratchet type mechanism uh, where you can, um, or rack and pinion me mechanism, I should say, uh, where you can raise and lower the table. This this one has, and it's it's doable lifting it. Obviously, if you had some very heavy load on the top, then that might be a bit a uh, bit less likely. So we're gonna we're gonna drill this. It's just a bit of scrap, so we can drill it as many times as we like. Uh, I didn't send punch it. Maybe you noticed that. I think it's gonna send. Uh, it's gonna drill just fine without send punching. The the drill I sharpened freehand earlier. By the way, I have got goggles. Uh, the drill I sharpened freehand earlier, uh, and um, yeah, I think it's good. So let's start. Yeah, it's not skidding around. So it does that comfortably, no problem at all. Obviously, if you wanted to drill big holes uh, using this bench drill, then uh, rather than go for a large drill to start off with, and if you wanted, you could even uh, pop the chuck out and then you could use a drill, a drill bit on a mall staper, which is, um, yeah, definitely doable. I do that occasionally, not so much on this drill, but um, I wouldn't go for like a large drill straight away because although we're in bottom speed, it's not very low it's not like it's got a back gear anyway that that drilled fine Let, let's let's just do a couple more just to prove a point that it works so, one thing that i do possibly miss on this drill is this doesn't have a foot stop, an emergency stop. My other drill, which is my pretty much my main drill, I do have a foot stop. And I don't just use it as an emergency stop, it's, it's the stop that I use all the time. I find it really, really handy that, uh, particularly if you're, you're holding something, you're feeding something down and, you, and then feeding back up, and then you can just uh, hit it with your foot and stop which I think is, is great. It wouldn't be difficult at all to fit a foot stop on this one. It's just something I haven't ever got around to. So what are we going to do now? We could uh, drill some wood. Uh, rather than use the twist drill, which obviously the twist drill will drill in there. Uh, let's use one of these. Uh, my mind's a blank for the moment as to uh, what you call this. Uh, full snobet. I think that's full snobet. Uh, 15 millimeters it says uh, by the way it's a little special and uh, they're pretty rubbish when I bought them new not sharp at all uh, I bought some things from little which I think are, are great uh, like their step cutters I think are really good actually um, and uh, but these 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 bits not not the best believe me so I think we could actually increase the speed here but let, let's try this anyway. Uh, you can see I've done a few tests there. Let, let's go for the side. Yeah, so drill's absolutely fine, doesn't it? As you would expect. Let's speed it up. Before I take the cover off the stung, so I can do a belt change, I'll just turn the power off. So we go for second from top speed. I don't know whether I mentioned earlier, but the motor's single phase in induction motor it's on a resilient mount which is a little bit of a shame actually to put a, a resilient mount motor on this i mean they're good don't, don't get me wrong but uh the resilient mount motors are actually like really seemingly really popular with uh lathe users uh because of the reduced vibration i don't think reduced vibration is really too much of an issue on a drilling machine uh but 
Uh, yeah, so I, I think probably had I, had I used this motor elsewhere, it might have actually um, made, made better use of it. I don't know. Anyway, any old motor really is going to do on a drill, that's what I'm saying. So we're going to go for a higher speed this time. Let's turn the power on. Goggles on. Much faster this time. You've probably seen everything you want to see now, but let's just turn off. Let's just let's just try uh, knocking the chuck out. So to knock the chuck out, you're going to need uh, a key. Okay, now I've got two very different keys here. You want to get a key that's flat. Okay, just from made from flat bar. This key here, you'll see actually gets, or maybe you can see, actually gets thicker as I'm going down there. Okay. So not only, I'm not just talking about there, I'm talking about here. Uh, don't use one like this on this, uh, otherwise you could possibly split things apart or jam this in. So I'm going to go down like to about there, okay, lock, which will hold that. Have a look through until I can see daylight through there. Get that. I've got a block of wood there to catch the chuck. There we go. Comes off. You'll notice that there's a tang on there. So when we refit that, and once again, as I think I mentioned earlier, you're not limited to using a chuck. You could, if you want, use a drill bit, a twist drill, which actually has that tang, the Morse tape and tang on it. But when when you put this back in, it's got to be at certain points. It's not going to hold in until you go, and then so that's then going to engage. Uh, I'm probably not explaining it very clearly there, but that's what you've got to do. Uh, the way I like to just push that in to the taper, just a block of wood like that. I have been known to give them a little tap. Uh, that's in now. Uh, another feature which is interesting on this that a lot of drills that I've used in the past, and I've, I've used quite a lot, which needed uh, a few fixes to them, uh, off very often, it's the return, the the spring on the quill. So there's, there's a coil spring here, and often that spring is either snapped or somehow disengaged, so it's not returning fully. So what happens is it just hangs down. Now, this drill actually has a very nice feature that it's got a little ratchet mechanism in here. So let's just pull this out and then hopefully we can release. I don't know whether you can see that. So now, uh, this is like, you know, like a lot of drills just hanging down like that. You know, the spring's broken or missing or, or whatever. And so uh, then when you fit a new spring, which by the way, can be quite problematic on some, um, and in fact, some on some drills, it's actually quite dangerous trying to fit the spring because you've got to put it in under a little bit of tension and there's all manner of issues anyway. So, but on this, you can put it in under no tension at all. If I took this nut off, you'd understand why, but it's very easy to put it in there. Uh, and then you can then, let's just wind this back up. You can then see if you, hopefully you can see there's this little thing here, which is just popping in and out as I do this up. So you can actually set the tension, so not, not quite tight enough there. Nearly, so add a little bit more tension. It's so incredibly easy to adjust. It's like I've never known a, a pillar drill that's, that's as easy as that. It's, it's like a feature which I would have thought should be on every drill. So that's about right now. Now on the other side, let's just get the camera. So hopefully you can see. On the other side as well, we've got depth stop. Personally, I don't use that. Um, we've got the speed chart there. That's the table. In the past, it has 
been filled with uh, JB Weld, but you know, it's as tables go, I'd say that's, that's very good. Uh, it really doesn't matter anyway, it's flat. Uh, that's the base, has had a coat of hammerite or three coats, I can't remember now, of hammerite in the past, uh, just because it was a bit rough from the previous owner or the previous previous, I'm not too sure. Uh, the handle at one point was slightly cracked or missing, I can't remember. So uh, made that from a little bit of hex stock, which is the same as uh, used to make the nut. Okay. So if you've got any questions, please do ask. I'm no expert on Meddings drills, but um, it strikes me that this Meddings drill is um, pretty nice. Good solid drill. Okay, thank you very much for watching.